So today, I'm not just uh, interested in preaching fantastic message, as people may call it, but I like to speak to people's mind, as the Lord lays it on my mind. Hello, Mom. As we celebrate Mother's Day today, I want to talk to at least one person. Every time I have the opportunity to stand and speak this word of God, I I'm looking for the audience of one. If I'm looking for more than the audience of one, I will struggle to please multitude. But I'm always looking for the audience of one that the Lord sent me to. And every message is for somebody. It could be more, it could be the one, the one person I'm talking about does not mean one person as in literal one person. It could be one people, one group of people, or anybody that is willing to listen. Let's start from Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who causes his father or mother, let him be put to death. That's how powerful this thing is. He who causes his father or mother, let him be put to death. Honor your father and your mother. God commanded it. And the Bible is not telling me that God asks us to honor our good fathers and good mothers. Just your father and your mother, period. God knew that there are some fathers or mothers that may not be good, that may be mean. They may not behave well, but he said, just honor them. He who curses, he who curses his father or mother, let him be put to death. A penalty for you to curse your father or your mother is death. Now, some people may not die physically, but they, are, they will die spiritually. Death is about separation. It's about severance. When you are separated from life, when life is taken from a person, you die. So, there are people that are struggling today that their struggle is traceable to what they did to their parents, father or mother. He will curses. There are curses that don't come out of our mouth. They come from our hearts. You don't say it. But your heart is talking. You speak evil. You speak negative things. You disregard your parents. In Proverbs chapter 30 verse 11, the Bible says there is a generation, there is a generation that curses its, its father and does not bless its mother. Every single one of us, we were born by somebody. We all have a mother. And we have to honor our mothers. Last December, Pastor John traveled to Africa. He went to Nigeria when he was going. He said something. We, he came to the house and we were talking. He was just telling me about the journey to Africa. And he said, uh, I will want to go to the village to see my mom. I said, wow, this is beautiful. As a matter of fact, it was, he came to the house to give me a Christmas gift. He brought a check, a check, if you remember Pastor John. He brought the money, and I said to him, please, take this money and give it to Mama for me. That's from me to Mama in the village. And I said, please, make sure I am so blessed that you are going to the village to see her. Mama has not seen Pastor John for many years. But he's been sending money home. It got so bad that Mama said, I don't want to take your money anymore. I want to see you. I want to cook so that you can eat my food. You have not eaten my food in a long time. I said, please make sure you see mama. Because I understand the heart of a mother. Can you imagine not seeing your child for a long time? You keep talking over the phone. It's not equal to seeing that child. And when he got to Nigeria, he got to Lagos. He flew to uh, Aqua Ibom to see mama. And spent at least one solid night. There's no gift. Five Five nights. God bless you. There was nothing that mama would have loved more than that. That was greater than money. As a parent, I understand this. Even though I'm not a woman. And even as a man, when I look at my children, I'm thinking about the time they will leave home now. The time when I have to call each one of them and say, when are we going to see you now? If you understand what mothers go through, nine months of pregnancy, Many nights that he cannot sleep. Many nights 
that they did not even know what was going on in their bodies. They had all kinds of uh, uh, flying emotions. They want to eat rice. They are craving for rice so much that when they see the rice, they say they don't want to eat it anymore. All kinds of emotion. You, you, she was a, a, a young, beautiful girl. Lady, when she got married, but because of childbearing, her figure would change. And the man is still keeping his six-pack or eight-pack, but the woman is losing hers, growing one pack. And so this is what women go through. Mothers go through it. And the time of delivery, it is a, it's a question of life or death for many women. We've heard about women that died during childbearing. And they still have to go through this. The best we do is we pace up and down the, the hospital lobby. Say, doctor, doctor, how is the situation now? Just, 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 just hold on, hold on, hold on. She, everything is going to be fine. But it's the woman that is in labor. And if she's not going through labor, if she's going to go through CS, they're going to cut her body, not ours. And this child will come out of this woman. It's a blood covenant because there's no child bearing that does not require blood. The blood of the mother will be shed. It's a blood, it's a blood thing. It's a blood covenant. So that's why the Bible says, oh, not them. If not for any time, that time. And today, I see many believers praying, going from mountain to mountain, and they don't know the cause or the source of their problem is how they are treating their parents. And you cannot pray and pray and pray and think that prayer will replace obedience to God's commandment. Many people are suffering because of what I'm talking to you about this morning. Because of how you are treating your parents, obeying the commandment of God. God takes it as his responsibility. He's offended when we don't obey him. Hallelujah. So in Proverbs chapter 20 verse 20, the Bible says, Whoever causes his father or his mother, his lamb, will be put out in deep darkness. Whoever. Causes his father or his mother, his lamb. And whoever means whoever. It doesn't matter how much you can speak in tongues or you can pray or you can fast. It does not even matter how much anointing you carry. It doesn't matter because God is not patcher. His word is eternal. When he says it, he means it. He doesn't change it for anybody. You will never find me disrespecting any adult, any mother. No matter how high the anointing. No matter how much God raises me in this life. Because there are principles in the word of God that you must obey. When I was a young believer, there were certain young guys like me. We, just, we were all bubbling in the Lord. We were all filled with the Holy Ghost, fire up. But we didn't have knowledge. And some of them left home. They said, Daddy, my dad smoked cigarette. He's a sinner. So they went into a house, and all of them were there speaking in tongues every day, praying, as if they are the only one that will go to heaven. And indirectly, they were walking in, disob in disobedience, cursing their parents, calling them, being disobedient, and saying they are sinners. They were not even trying to witness to their parents, they just condemned them. Like they were going to, they had coronavirus, they were going to infect them. And many believers do this. You cannot say because you have seen the light, if your parents have not seen the light, don't judge them, condemn them, or be disobedient to them, or disrespect them. Some prayers are not heard because of parental abuse. How can a child who is praying to God, asking God for, for blessing, and who is abusing his mother, the mother is in the village, can't eat three square meal, and you are living in surplus, I don't care who, which, which God, which God are you going to pray to? Who is that God that will answer your prayer? Your mom is there holding her tummy, not because she wants to give birth to another child, but because she's hungry. And she's going to sleep, and you are tearing chicken anyhow. She doesn't even need to place any cost. That person is cost. I don't know how we read the Bible, but it's so plain. So you don't have to place a curse and say negative words or utter negative words against your parents. When you don't treat them right, you are cursing them. You are dishonoring them.
Proverbs chapter 19 verse 26 says, He who mistreats his father and chases away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. He who mistreats his father and chases away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. Before my father died, I gave him all the honor I could give him. And I was privileged to lead him to the Lord three weeks before he died. So look, there are principles in this kingdom that work. They work. Do you know there are people who don't pray so much, but because they obey principles, they follow God's commandment. Doors will be open. Doors will open for them. Not because they are praying so hard. There are people who will pray and some assault, and their lives will not move on because they are failing in certain areas, crucial areas. The prayers of parents go far. Uh oh, it, it goes far. It goes far. Nobody must miss it. Abraham blessed his children. Isaac did the same thing. Jacob did the same thing. There's something about it. And there's a reason why the Bible is saying, honor oh, them. Look at the Bible. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ when he was age 12. And they were looking for him. He tarried in Jerusalem. The Bible says when they found him, he followed his parents home. And submit himself to them. Even the Messiah. Baby Jesus could have healed the dead. Raised the dead. He was anointed from the womb. When Mary greeted Elizabeth. Elizabeth testified. That at the sound of your voice. The baby in my womb leapt. Because it was filled with the Holy Ghost. He said the mother of my Lord. Jesus was of the Holy Ghost. So not because he was a baby. He was weak. He was anointed as a baby to do wonders. But God follows protocol. He works with time. Until the time came, Jesus did not start his ministry. But not because he didn't carry the anointing. In Romans chapter 10, verse 1 to 3, let me read something for you. Romans chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God. But not according to knowledge. They have a zeal for God. But not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And seeking to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted to the righteousness of God. Now these people are trying to create their own righteousness. Do you know how people can justify their own actions. And say well, what I'm doing is good. Irrespective of what the Bible is saying. He said my heart desire. And prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God. But not according to knowledge. There are believers that have zeal for God. They want to do. They are very active, very agile. They can jump up and down. But not with knowledge. And without knowledge, we will be acting like fools. So my people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. We need it. And I tell people, I said, one of the things you, you need last in ministry is zeal. And when many people think that when you have zeal, you are ready for ministry. Young people in this walk, once they have zeal, they think they are ready. No. Zeal is the last thing you really need. You need it at the beginning, you need it at the last. But before you jump into, into this walk, you need knowledge. You need to grow. You need to know the God you are serving. You need to know what you are doing. Are you with me this morning? And you see, th these are little things that you begin to do that can shape your Christian life. Your journey with Christ. When you don't allow pride or arrogance to enter you. When you don't say because now you are highly lifted or highly placed, you have a good job, you are making good money, you are living big, and you now belittle your parents. Or because you speak the British accent. Or the American accent. And your parents that, can, that cannot speak English. You think because they are illiterate. I don't want to see them. You are causing them. You are grieving their souls. And there is consequence for that. The Bible says in Micah chapter 7 verse 6. For son dishonors father. Daughter rises against her mother. Daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. Do you know how many times 
we hear about mother and daughter-in-law. Out of every 100 marriages, I think about 85 of them, you will see problem with mother and mother in, and daughter-in-law. It's like the devil likes it, likes that fight. And these are areas that believers, you cannot be a child of God and you are falling into this trap of the enemies. How many sons have issue with their father-in-laws? You're a son, you marry somebody's daughter, but you don't want to see the father or the mother. You are causing yourself. You are causing yourself. Or you are a woman, you got married to somebody's son, and you don't want to see the parent, the people that give back to that person. You say, because you got married, me and my husband. What you sow, you will reap. It's coming back. Before you even reap it, God will punish you. So please don't just, oh, I don't know how to even say this. We are too religious. We fail in many principles. I'm not talking about you, all of us sitting here, but I'm talking about the body of Christ everywhere. When I, when, when, when I watch, I listen to some people preaching uh, on social media, fantastic message sometimes. But some, some people are good with words. I am not good with words. You see how I'm talking? I'm not good with words. But I know. There's something. I know what I know. You can be eloquent. Speak what people would love to hear. But if it is against this book, nonsense. God is not in it. You, can want, you may want to live in the skies among angels. But if you don't follow some principles with God, you will fall down. Like the devil did. Satan fell down from heaven. Look, Christianity is very simple. All we need to do is just to obey God, follow his principle. A lot of things that we call mountain, they will come down when you obey. And as we celebrate Mother's Day today, I'm talking to somebody. You need to change how you relate with the mothers in your life. I'm not talking about your biological mother now. I'm saying mothers in your life because I have four mothers I want to share with you briefly. There are four mothers you must pay attention to. Number one is your mother-in-law that I just mentioned. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 to 15, the Bible says, Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her. And she arose and served them. This was Jesus entering Peter's house and found Peter's mother-in-law in Peter's house. So which means the mother of his wife was living with them. Was in their house. But she was sick. Jesus found her there and healed her. If Peter did not have a problem with her mother-in-law, why would you? Amen. Number two. Let me not spend too much time on that. Number two. Mother in love. I just want to use the word in mother in law, mother in love. Mother in love. These are adopted mothers. You call them God mothers. They just love you. Love brought them to you and brought you to them. And there are times in life that you find people like this. You may you may be living abroad, away from your biological parents. And one woman, one mother we pick interest in you and treat you as her child. And we do anything for you. If you encounter people like that, treat them as mothers. Mother in love. Number three is mother in the Lord. Mother in the Lord. We hear this very often. Mother in the Lord. Mother in the Lord. Oftentimes our pastor's wife is a mother in the Lord. Or somebody who has spiritual influence, spiritual covering over us. We call them mother in the Lord, our mother in the Lord, our mother in the Lord. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 15, the Bible says, for whosoever, Jesus was the one talking here, they, they came to him, they said, look, your mother and your sisters, they are waiting outside looking for you. Then he said, whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So mothers in the Lord are people who are doing God's will. You met them in the Lord. They are mother to you because of the Lord. They speak the word of the Lord to you. They pray for you 
in the name of the Lord. They have spiritual covering, spiritual link to you. Don't joke with them. Amen? Don't joke with them. You owe them equal honor and respect. There are people who have mothers, mothers in the Lord and they don't respect their mothers in the Lord. But you should treat them with respect. Because they, 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 are, they have a covering over you. And it doesn't matter whether they speak good English or they don't. Or whether they went to school or not. Or maybe they are rich or they, don't, they are not rich. Or they are young or they are older. It doesn't matter. Mothers in the Lord must be respected and honored. And lastly, is what I call mother in the blood. I'm using the word mother in, mother in, for us to remember. Mother in the blood is your biological mother. In the blood means that you were, he, she gave back to you, shedding her own blood. You have blood connection. There's a sort of blood covenant. I make this my last because I want to dwell on it a little. Every single one of us, you may not have a mother in the Lord. You may not have a mother in love. You may not even have a mother in law if you are not married. But you will have a mother in the blood. You are born by somebody. And you must honor them. Somebody is listening to me. I feel strongly in my spirit under the unction of the Holy Ghost. There's somebody you are hearing this message and the Holy Spirit is talking to you to make amend. Please don't be stubborn. On this Mother's Day, this day, make a change. Forgive your parents. After all, the Bible says, let vengeance be mine. All you are required to do, your parents might have offended you with evidence. Let God deal with that. But in the course of you fighting your fight, don't offend him. Here you are, you have a relationship with God. Your parents are here. They offended you truly. The facts are there. But while you are fighting them, you may break the relationship between you and God. Why don't you keep the relationship between you and God and obey God, follow his commandments, and tell him about this relationship that is painful, and let him deal with it. In fact, you have more say before this God when you keep his commandment. When all is well between you and him. Am I talking to somebody this morning? It shouldn't be difficult just fear him first. Then the rest he will handle for you. I know that parents are human. Just like us. They are liable to fault. They are not perfect. We are not perfect. And if their imperfection is hurting us, don't disrespect them. Still honor them. Do your own. Fulfill all righteousness before this God. And when you talk to people, I know when you talk to people, you say, if you see how, what my dad did to me, what my mom did to me, it will make sense. Everybody will sympathize with you, except God, who wants you to obey him. Many of our fights are unnecessary. If only, if only we can forgive, we can let go and honor God and obey him. Mothers in the blood. If not for one thing, one day, one day, that day when they were pushing and you were coming out, you were coming out, your coming to this world could, 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 could have taken her own life. If not for any reason, you came and the Bible says, honor them. So you have to honor them. In Luke chapter 2, verse 51. The Bible says, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Mothers, mother in the blood. They have secrets about their children that nobody knows. I'm telling you as you are now, your mother knows many things about you before you were born. There were dreams she had. Messages she received about the child that is coming. Mary received about Jesus. The Bible says she kept all these things in her heart. And if you look at how Jesus Christ had his journey to the cross, Mary was following. Where was Joseph? Well, maybe Joseph was the adopted father. 
But Mary was following till to the cross. She was there when her son was being crucified. Many years ago, I made a trip to Nigeria. Uh, I think uh, to see my wife. And we were eating somewhere in Lagos. And in that restaurant, a mother came to us with her little boy. And she came to tell us about the little boy's uh, musical CD. They carried it in a, in a nylon bag. The woman was sweating. And she was telling us that this boy just released this album and selling it. I think we bought a few. We bought a few just to support them. And as they were leaving, I said, look at mother. Mothers in the blood, the blood will speak. They will follow you and follow your vision till you make it. If you don't make it, they are not happy. Mothers in the blood will not eat, but they want you to eat. Mothers in the blood will not wear clothes. Good ones. I know there are bad ones. Good ones. They will not wear clothes, but they want you to be clothed. They will follow your dream and your passion. They want you to succeed in life. Mary kept a lot of things in her heart. The mother of the sons of Zebedee, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, she came to Jesus. Matthew 20, 20, the Bible says, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. What was she asking? Asking Jesus that when you get to heaven, when you sit on your throne, I want these two sons of mine, one to sit on your right hand and the other to sit on your left hand. Now, when did they say, the rest of the disciples heard this, they were angry. They said, what kind of this thing? Where, where are we going to sit? Where are we going to sit? And I'm sure the, some of them were, I wish my own mother is there to, to come and lobby for me. The mother of the sons of Zebedee was a good lobbyist. You may say she was greedy. Uh -uh, the two best places you wanted for, the, for your children. But that's how mothers do. They want the best for their children. They want the best for their children. In 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 16 to 18, Bathsheba did something. If not for Bathsheba, Adonijah would have become the king. It was the mother that went to David and reminded David, did you not promise me that Solomon, my son, will be the king? And do you know what is going on in the city now? Adonijah is proclaiming that he's the king. And David said, really? He called the priest and the prophet and said, anoint Solomon. Let him sit on the, on the donkey and proclaim around the city that he is the king. He will sit on my seat. If not for Bathsheba. Solomon did not have the God to come to his father and fight for the throne. It was the mother who did it. The prayers of our mothers are powerful. When they go on their knees and they're crying. In many churches, you will see women. Women will be the 80% of the congregation of many churches. Where are the men? Walking or drinking. They're the women. They're praying. If you take 10 prayer points from it, a true mother, I'm telling you nine of them will be for her children. One may be for herself. Don't, why would you joke? A lot of people think if you are sailing, if you are making it in life, you think it's your power? It is because somebody is praying for you. Just as you are praying for your children right now, your own parents are praying for you. And the need, the least we can give them is to honor them. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 27, you remember the story of Jacob and Esau? I have studied the scripture many times. I said, what? How, how did this woman, how did she balance, how, did she just hate Esau? No, she did not hate Esau. Esau was her son too. But she was working on a prophecy because she knew what was said concerning Jacob. And all she wanted to do was to make sure that this does not fail. May we have good mothers that will push us into our destinies. Amen. Jacob could have been so careless and will miss the blessing, I mean, blessing of his father, Isaac. And he did not even know what God said concerning, concerning him. But the mother knew what God said. Many of us, what we are going through 
I'm telling you, the secret is known to many of our parents. They know, they know, they know some things. And because they are our parents, God hears their prayers. God hears their prayer. I want to close with this. I just want to tell somebody today, it is still time. There's still time for us to make amend. There's still time for us to do the right thing. Your mother in the blood. Your mother in the blood. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 25, the Bible says, Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her who bore you rejoice. Make them happy. Don't make them sad. Let them rejoice. Let them rejoice. Let them be happy. Your parents can do something that hurts your feeling, but if you fear God and you honor them, you watch how you treat them. So today, please make sure you make your father and your mother especially glad. Call them. Tell them how, how uh, great they are in your life. Remind them of the good they have done. Bless their souls. Make it a good Mother's Day, a happy Mother's Day for your mom. And out of these four, if, if your mom is late, at least you will have one of the remaining three. I'm telling you, God will give you one. You can never be left as an orphan. May God bless our parents in Jesus' name. And bless our mothers. And may God bless us. Because we are parents too. And I pray that our prayers for our children will come to pass in Jesus' name. There are times when our parents will do something bad. And I'm telling you, just as we are not perfect, they are not perfect. And it's so painful that you can say, I want to disown my parents. I've heard children that will say, I disown my parent. It's not even good for a parent to say, I disown my child. Not to talk of a child saying, I disown my parent. I don't think any CTM man, by the grace of God, we get to that level where you are so bitter and you forget this word. And you say, I disown my parents. If we are going to this heaven, Pastor Lajide, I don't know how to sweet talk words. If we are going to this heaven, and this book that is given to us in this life will be opened on the judgment day again, and will, the saints will be judged from this book. May this book not testify against us. For God will ask us, did you read it? Did you hear it? And we say, yes. Did you do it? No. Ah. Because on the judgment day, there will be too many had I known. There are people who are filled with bitterness and they don't know they are bitter. They are filled with anger. I know your parents offended you. It is true. They did wrong. They did not treat you well. Maybe they even curse you. But let God deal with that. Because I don't know how some people pray. You are praying against your parents. Go to the mountain and the valley. And call on this God. He won't answer you. He does not break his protocol. You can't, you, can't, you can't bamboos God with the anointing he gave you. If you're anointed, you want to use the anointing. Like, huh? It's not impossible that you have a mother or a father that is mean. That treats you as if you are not her child. And you are, you are tempted to be angry, to cause. Can you imagine? You are praying against your own parent and you say, God should punish him or punish her. And you, vis you visualize that parent in hell. What kind of heart is that? It's not from the Lord. Let God be the judge. What you can do is to pray for your parent that, God, that you repent. God save them. It is wickedness of heart for anybody to think evil and sentence somebody to hell in your heart. You can raise a, a hand and call it holy is an evil hand. They, they did Jesus Christ evil. They slapped him. They cursed him. They beat him. Yet he was appealing to the father, forgive them, they don't know what they are doing. If your parents know what they are doing, they won't do what they did. Today is Mother's Day. I just feel so strong in my mind that I need to say this word in these little ways that I'm saying it, that the person who has it will hear. Treat your parents with honor. Respect them. Your mother-in-law, your mother-in-law, your mother in the Lord, 
and your mother in the blood. All of them, all the mothers must be honored and respected. So that your days may be long. The first commandment with the promise is for honor your father and your mother. So that your days may be long, not your good and bad. There's no condition to that statement. Honor your father and mother. And God knows that the world is full of wickedness. That these parents may not be good. That for you as an individual, just honor them. Leave the rest for me. I'll handle it. I've seen parents who did bad to their children. Disowned them. Abandoned them. But when God lifts you up, whatever they did to you, God did not leave you there. God pick you up. Now that you are here, don't say, I'm going to pay them back. You have taken the law into your hands. Do your own. Honor them. Treat them well. And let God handle the rest. You may be hearing this and you don't like what I'm saying. But God knows I'm, I'm pouring my mind out. What he asked me to tell you, I'm telling you. Throw it away. When we meet there, I will tell him, I said it, sir. Then you will tell him why you did not change. Why you did not listen. You may think this word is just the word of Pastor Lajide. But I'm sure heaven has a record of what is going on. Because the eyes of God is watching. The eyes of God are watching over everything we do. There's nothing that God will miss. There's a record in heaven today that we're in the church today, we heard these words. Amen. And please, if you know anybody who has issue with his parents or her parents, advise the person up. for your own sake that you knew. What did you do? Even if it is just one word, say it and say, bro, sister, no, forgive them. Pray for them. Bless them. You do, you, I'm telling you, sometimes you just do one good thing for your parents. And they say, ah, God will bless you. That prayer comes from somewhere very, very deep. It will follow you. It will go with you. It will go with you. Precious Father, I have poured my mind out to this audience of one. The Bible says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Precious Father, I pray that these ears will hear this word. And the mind will receive the word. And we will be doers of this word. In the name of Jesus. I know that truth is bitter. It is very bitter to the flesh, but sweeter to the soul. I know it is hard to accept the truth. But I'm praying for the power, the enablement to accept this word, this truth. And help us to walk in this revelation, this understanding, this knowledge. Let the flesh die now. And help our spirit to be alive. As we celebrate Mother's Day, I pray every mother that is still hurting, that is suffering, that is in pain. Let your joy visit them. Let your joy locate them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you.